All right. Um, okay, I don't use the clip. Okay, so hi, I'm Wittat. I'm from Singapore. So um, I'll be talking more about Pocket Science Lab today. So a little bit info of what Pocket Science Lab is about. It's actually a small uh, Arduino size um, so, uh, board that actually tries to simulate uh, several science scientific instruments. So um, I will talk about uh, what science instruments we are, uh, that it actually supports after this. So um, yeah. So a little bit history of how Pocket Science Lab, uh, science, uh, lab started. So initially it was called C Lablet. It was actually quite bigger size, uh, maybe about uh, half a size of a laptop. Uh, that was the initial idea. And then of course, um, uh, that was closed source. So we tried to actually open source a Pocket Science Lab. That's uh, where it came out with the first hardware. Um, yes, and then we created a Python desktop app with uh, PyQt. Uh, because, uh, but then uh, there's a lot of things that's broken when from Python 2 upgrade to Python 3. Uh, so we actually stopped that and we uh, created a newer version with Electron now. Um, and then we actually reduced the size of the Pocket Science Lab from that size to uh, about the credit card size, uh, Arduino size, yeah. And we try to sell it on uh, the portability so that actually anyone can bring it uh, outside for learning activities, uh, just plug it to a phone as OTG. And uh, yeah, and then uh, we have a web app. Subsequently, uh, this is a part of a um, uh, future roadmap, which is actually still in planning. Yep. So this, uh, how you see, this is the original uh, C lab. But this is quite zoom in size. This is the original version. And then uh, we have our Uno form. Uno form. Um, this is actually a double sided. Uh, this, uh, the cost of this is actually higher than uh, the current ones because it's printed on both sides. And then, of course, uh, this is the one that uh, is the final one. So um, it's about uh, this size, I think. Uh, yeah. So uh, I think I'll just pass it around. Uh, y'all want to have a look? Y'all can have a look. Uh, yep. So the, you actually could act, um, uh, solder on a ESP8266 at the back, so you have a Wi-Fi support. Or you actually can attach a Bluetooth module of HC05 at the front. And of course, um, we keep the programmer ports open, so uh, it's running on PIC24. So if let's say we have a new firmware with more functions, you can actually just flash it with the PIC kit, and then uh, you can have the new functions. So yes, how do we use this? Uh, so you can use it through our desktop app or Android app. So initially, the desktop app was only on the um, uh, Linux because uh, uh, it was built on Python. Uh, of course, and then subsequently we work with schools um, in Singapore and they request, most of them are using Windows. So then we started uh, to think how, how are we going to make the desktop app multi-platform and that's why we came up with um, Electron.js. Um, yeah, but anyway, um, yeah, just to roughly show you, these are some of the uh, libraries that we have. The Python library is just a very basic one. Uh, it talks to the, uh, uh, the board through the terminal with uh, uh, Linux or terminal. Yeah. Then we have desktop, Android, and firmware. All these are open source. Uh, even the schematics also open source as well. Okay, so this is uh, how our Android app looks like. This is actually an older version of the Pocket Science Lab. Uh, the newer one doesn't look like this. The pin slightly changed. You see there's the old one. This actually has a, uh, what's that called? A potentiometer. That's actually to adjust for volume um, and things like that. So anyway, uh, things have slightly changed now. Okay, so anyway, this is like an oscilloscope and some power source. Uh, you don't need uh, external power source to actually power the board. Everything is just powered through a micro USB from your phone, and that's sufficient. And then we have multimeter wave generator. The, the, the basic few uh, instruments that you always actually uh, use in labs. And then of course, uh, we to make a user, a user experience better, we actually on each instrument, we did a guide. So you actually can just swipe out on the app and uh, see how do you actually use the uh, app, yep. and where to plug it and things like that. And then of course, uh, this is the new desktop app. Um, yeah, can see this clearly. So it's actually built with uh, Node.js and Electron. Uh, yeah. So uh, our focus is actually just on the base basic functions uh, of the uh, Android app, just to port over yet. So we have uh, these are some of the ones. And then uh, we recently actually came out with a robotic arm control. Um, UI. Uh, so actually, uh, we actually made PS Lab to control some arms uh, at previously at one of uh, our ha uh, hackathons in Vietnam with a partnership with UNESCO. 
Okay, um, okay, so these are some of the hardware specs. Um, yeah, uh, I, I'm more into the software side, but uh, for those who are into hardware, you actually can look at this. Yeah. Uh, of course, you can find this as well on our GitHub page or our website as well. We actually post it, put it up there. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah, some more uh, waveforms, PWMs. All right. So we have a measurement. So like you have multimeters and stuff uh, and things like that. Of course, one of the functions that we build on now is actually um, uh, recording. So while while you're actually taking reading, you actually could record the, the statistics and um, uh, export it as CSV together with the coordinates. So our idea was actually to make an online platform for different people to actually um, uh, share their data, let's say weather data, right? So sometimes some of the sources, they say official sources, the data actually are not as accurate. Let's say, um, uh, we just take Bangkok for example, right? It may, might not be the fact. So let's say they have this term, um, PSI meter in the middle of the city. So that reads of maybe a 80 PSI, but maybe it's just outskirts of Bangkok, could be much lower, but you are taking 80 PSI. So by having PS labs throughout uh, different people, you actually can have more accurate data. So anyway, yeah, this um, I'm also uh, responsible for the production of PS Lab. So I went to China. Uh, yeah, so this is the the batch that you are uh, passing around. Uh, where's the board now? Yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so this I went to China and produce. Of course, there's many things on uh, production. Uh, if you want to ask me, you can ask me after that. And yeah, these are some of the stuff. Of course, there's more. Um, uh, yeah, I think the the most important one is actually the first line. Yeah. Uh, there are some manufacturers who say it's very cheap, very cheap, but they don't tell you the condition of it. Yeah. And then, of course, um, we are working. Uh, so I'm more of a responsible for Singapore operations, ops. Uh, of course, uh, there's, we do this in Vietnam schools and uh, the, some of the uh, hackerspace in Berlin as well. Uh, so this is some of the activities here. Of course, uh, we will be conducting more, uh, working with schools to understand their curriculum and how to integrate this with their... Uh, uh, syllabus so that you can actually use it uh, to make uh, learning instead of just stuck in classroom but can go out and have uh, more fun. Yep. Of course this doesn't limit to um, schools. Um, we actually, uh, uh, there are some hobbies or companies to actually purchase some of the kids from us to actually see whether they could uh, integrate it with their current company solutions. Yeah, so um, these are some of the things, uh, how it can evolve, because everything is open source, sometimes things might get a little bit of slower, or you have buggy things, right? I mean, it's a part and parcel of open source. <laughs> so, yeah, so, uh, yeah, we always, uh, um, there's lack of documentation now, of uh, documentation meaning like uh, experiments on how to use the bots. Of course, we are working to that, and um, we are, we'll be very happy if uh, the users who actually have the PS Lab bots could actually contribute what they do with the bot. So we can actually share with the community as well. Yeah. Um, we actually have an acrylic casing. Uh, we cut an acrylic casing with a Lion's Forge cut, a laser cutter outside, uh, if you managed to catch it just now. Uh, so we actually uh, did the design with uh, Inkscape as well. Uh, it's also on the GitHub repo. I mean, uh, yeah, if you want to, <laughs> if you manage to purchase a PS Lab, if you want an acrylic case, you could actually just fork and find a laser cutter to cut it out on an acrylic. Yeah, so um, yeah, these are currently some of the places we buy, uh, we sell. Uh, yep, very straightforward. Um, okay, so uh, we'll be, this is our uh, summit next year, Fourth Asia Summit. We have this every year actually at uh, Singapore. Uh, there's actually one um, the following week in Vietnam actually. Uh, it's a two day one, uh, but I think that's a, a much smaller scale. This is a bigger one. Yep. So I think uh, that's it for PS Lab. Oh, uh, we can be found on the Snap, Snap Store on uh, Ubuntu, uh, Google Play, and F Droid as well. Yeah. So, yep. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, so question to you. Is your desktop app going to be running Linux or is it only Windows? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. So the Electron app is a cross platform. So you could actually export. Uh, uh, Electron JS, right? It's actually um, you program it in JavaScript, but you actually could export it to Windows and Mac as well. But the base currently we are working on uh, uh, heavily is actually mainly on uh, uh, Linux because with the Python library. Yes, correct. So it can run on Linux. Yes, uh, default it should be able. Uh, it, it will be able to run with Linux, and then Windows, of course, is uh, not very stable and things like that. Yeah. 
when we export over. Uh, two, two, meg, two, mm -hmm. Yes, it was uh, two. I think I showed previously two. So two for four channels. Uh, yep. Yes, I mean, uh, of course, um, our point is to actually keep this price point low. Um, this is about actually, I think, um, uh, 45 to 50 USD. Um, uh, currently, of course, there's a... Uh, uh, competitors in the market. Uh, I mean, uh, there's everything that's competitors. Uh, our main point is to actually keep it price point low, so that it's affordable. Uh, of course, uh, there's higher specs, much more expensive, or FPGA, uh, things like that. Uh, there are be better specs, but uh, yeah. Different, it differs from uh, person to person what they want to actually achieve. Yes. Uh, of course, uh, subsequently, we are actually, I think, um, uh, planning to do the next uh, production version of PS Lab. Uh, that actually, uh, I think, actually has more. It dive. It goes towards a more of an IoT devices. Uh, IoT device to actually put around maybe without the phone, just maybe a battery pack or something, to uh, uh, yeah to store data. Maybe one hour later, or one day later, I just come back and just collect the data. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, micro SD card. Yes, correct. <laughs> yeah, to store the data. That's uh, some of the suggestions. Of course, we are looking at the cost and, uh, of course, the, the software side as well. Yep. Any other questions? Yeah, I think uh, if, if um, there's no questions, uh, if you want to look at the board. Yep. Uh, no, actually, this is our own, um, uh, uh, our own board. So we have our own firmware and things like that. Yeah. So it doesn't work with uh, uh, Arduino, yeah. But we have the Python library open, so yeah. Um, I think I'm not very sure, but I think you might be possible. To, it might be possible to do that with the Python library. Andrew. Yes. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, we are working with schools. I mean, uh, this is where, uh, I mean, this is, I wouldn't consider this, some people, uh, some of them, people say this is quite uh, high specs for consider, considering uh, it's 45 USD around there. Uh, of course, uh, uh, to some people, they want, they are professionals, they want something more powerful. Yeah, of course, that's why this is more suited uh, for schools or, or company usage, small usage, IoT usage. Yeah, data collection. Yep. And uh, oh yeah, um, another thing is it works with um, Arduino sensors, uh, which is I2C. Yep. Uh, of course, we have uh, uh, pins for digital sensors as well, but that one is uh, take a little more, bit more time because there's a lot of sensors in the market, and we have to actually have to make it the digital sensor works with the firmware as well. Yep. Um, there are some digital sensors that should be already uh, that should already work. It's in the settings of the app. You could actually choose the external sensors of um, uh, which, which sensor to use from. Because for example, we actually have, um, like, let's say we have an instrument called Lux Meter that actually taps on the uh, phone's uh, light sensor to show the Lux data. But of course, we give an option of them to actually connect an external Lux sensor, uh, light, uh, light sensor to read the data from it and uh, record, yes. Uh, any more questions? Any? Yeah. Yeah, uh, if you want to look at the board, we are at the fossil booth outside. So, uh, yeah, uh, you can. So I mean, it's already done. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm done. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Mr.